four individuals to all county offices in an acting capacity for more than six months without proper authorization. Charge number five, contempt of court. The particulars of this allegation are that the governor did the following. One, grossly violated Article 10 and 73 of the Constitution. Two, Section 7, grossly violated Section 7 of the Leadership and Integrity Act and Section 10 of the Public Officers Ethics Act by engaging in a contemptuous, stubborn refusal to obey lawful court orders. Charge number six, illegally naming a public road after her husband. The particulars of this allegation are that the governor did the following. One, grossly violated Articles 10 and 73 of the Constitution and Section 7 and 111C of the Meru Count Honours and Awards Act 2018 by naming a public road after her husband without following the applicable statutory procedures. Charge number seven, contempt of the assembly. The particulars of this allegation are that the governor did the following. One, refused to honor summons from the county assembly's sector committee on justice, legal affairs, and cohesion to answer questions related to the impeachment motion. Two, directed her chief of staff to send a, contempt a contemptuous letter to the assembly in response to the summons for her to appear before the central committee. And three, through the CC finance and the county secretary, refused to furnish documents to the assembly on the grounds that an audit process was underway and that the matters raised by the assembly were sub -judice. Now, honorable senators, in terms of the way forward, following the reading of the charges against the governor, standing order 81B of the Senate standing orders as read together with section 33, subsection 3B of the County Governments Act gives the Senate two options on how to proceed with the matter. The Senate may, by resolution, appoint a special committee comprising 11 of its members to investigate the matter or investigate the matter in plenary. At an point of time during this sitting, a notice of motion for the establishment of a special committee shall be given. Should this motion be carried, the special committee will be required under section 33.4 of the County Governments Act and Standing Order 82 of the Senate to investigate the matter and to report to the Senate on whether it finds the particulars of allegations against the Governor to have been substantiated. In the event that the motion for the establishment of, of a special committee does not pass, the fallback position is that the Senate shall proceed to investigate and consider the matter in plenary. In this event, I will appoint the dates on which the Senate will sit in plenary to hear and determine the charges against the Governor. Honorable Senators, it is noteworthy, and I wish to emphasize to all Honorable Senators, that when we come to the debate on the motion for the establishment of the Special Committee, debate on the motion shall be limited to the substance of the motion, principally whether or not to establish a Special Committee. It will not be a debate on the substance of the impeachment or its merits, propriety, prudence, or even the constitutionality or the legality of the process that have been preceded the submission of this matter to the Senate. It is therefore not permissible to deviate to any matters other than the motion before the Senate. In the meantime, and during the pendency of the impeachment process in the Senate, I wish to caution all of the Senators to desist from publicly commenting on the merits or demerits of the impeachment motion before the Senate. Doing so will amount to anticipation of debate, which is an infringement of Standing Order 99. Therefore, it shall be out of order within the meaning of Standing Order 122 for any Senator to make comments, whether written or spoken, in relation to the conduct of the Governor or the impeachment process, which is outside the confines of the impeachment proceedings, as such comments may prejudice the just outcome of the process. Now, Honorable Senators, this is the third impeachment hearing in the 13th Parliament, and the second one involving the Governor in question. In, in undertaking this mandate, the Senate will be 
sitting as a quasi-judicial body and will conduct investigations into the alleged infractions of the Constitution and the law and thereafter make its determination on the matter. As such, it is a reminder that the impeachment hearing is not just a procedural formality but a fundamental process that plays a crucial role in upholding the principles of democracy and good governance. This hearing is one of the most crucial oversight tools and singular roles of the Senate. I conclude by urging honorable senators to exercise the highest level of responsibility on this particular matter. I thank you. Next order.